Howdy folks, Kerbo here, and today we've got some trains. I don't have uh, liveries for these engines, so they just say Run 8 Western. It's a generic name. This is Run 8. It's a railroad simulator. It's not just a train simulator. It simulates pretty much railroading in general. There's driving trains, there's dispatching, there's industries that process loads. There's quite a bit to it. Uh, Graphics-wise, it's not up to par with like a AAA title. They don't focus on graphics, they focus on realism and simulating the, all the systems. And they do a pretty good job of it. So I've been learning the ropes, I'm still a complete noob. But today we're going to try to do the Edison local job. So we're gonna take this train here, we've got some cars to set out. And we've got four Jeeps here on the head end. And we're gonna head on down the track and we've got some uh, some pickups and some setouts, and it's just a local job. But it's going to take a while, so I'll probably break this up into shorter segments. And I'll kind of try to explain what I'm doing along the way. Uh, like I said, I'm a noob. I'm not a professional railroader. I don't know a whole lot about prototypical railroad operation, so I'm just going to wing it. And uh, feel free to comment if I'm doing something wrong or I could do something different. Let me know. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now, not everything is modeled in the cab, so we're actually going to start the engines from the outside. Now, before I do that, let's go ahead and hop in the cab. This is my lead unit right here. There's my conductor. We'll call him Bob. So now we're in the cab here. Hey, Bob. Not all the switches are clickable, but some of them are. Uh, so we are short hood lead. That's in start stop. So we should be good to start the engine. And I actually have to hop outside to start the engine. So we're going to get the lead unit started. set that to run there. So our ankle cock is closed and it actually there's actually a lever right here that that moves when you change it but we're gonna go hook up all our cables so these engines are all working as one. So before we get the second unit started check these guys here. And we see our, our MU cable, multiple unit cable, is disconnected, so we're going to hook that up. And the air hose angle cocks are open, so that's good. I'm just going to go ahead and check all the MU connections for these guys. I don't think it starts with them set up. get kind of close to be able to click on the coupler. This should be all good. I should double check but the angle cock should be all okay. And then here we're hooked up to our train and angle cock is open so we can get the train brakes pumped up. Alright, we'll get this guy cranked. And we'll get this guy cranked. And we get the fourth one cranked. And we get going, we set them all to run. I can't actually get in the cab of these trailing units. I do want to set this guy up to be a short hood trail for the headlight. That is those guys all set. So when I raise the throttle the lead unit, we should hear this guy rev up. Oh, no. I haven't set my switches in the lead unit yet. Got a little more work to do. So 
just run down here. Hop up in the cab. Uh, we need to turn these three on. These are engine run basically says it will take command from the throttle. Uh, generator field, it will generate electricity for the traction motors. And I'm not sure what that does. Get some lights on. There we go. And let's get our headlight on dim. Now we can hop back out. Now the uh, unit should respond. Yep, alright. Let's run back here and when I throttle up that lead unit, they all should throttle up together. Yep, looking good. Alright, so we're going to need to run back to the back of our train. I should have actually checked this before I started, probably. I want to make sure the angle cock on the last car is closed. So we're not just blowing all our brake air out into the atmosphere. And then we're going to put an EOT device on the end, end of train. It'll let us know the brake pressure on the back of the train. It has a little flashy light. And it lets us know the uh, train is moving or not. So you can see it is closed, so that's good. And we're going to attach the EOT device. And we'll go check our brake pressure. We should be about ready to head on down the trail. I do want to check the dispatcher board real quick. I'm not sure if this main line out here is dispatched or not. I'm not going to have any other trains running this first uh, job here, just to kind of keep it simple. But there are AI controlled trains. You can have them running around, follow signals. Hop up here in the cab. Uh, brake pressure is looking good. So I'm going to pop to the dispatcher board, and I'm going to—I've got a paper map here. You can hear it rustling. We are near Edison. Is near McGundan and Sandcut. Okay, here's here's Sandcut. I think there actually are some trains. What he's waiting on? Is he waiting on that switch to be thrown? No, he's got a red signal. That's why. All right, let him set there. Uh, so the little area that we're working is actually right in here. It's not necessarily on the dispatcher board in any great detail. But I have a switch list that uh, you can export out from the game. Let me show you that real quick. So if I'm in the unit, I can pull up the switch list here. So I've got this printed out for reference. So we're picking up all these cars at these industries and we're setting out the cars on the back of the train at these industries. So that is our job for today. So to get out of here, we need to make sure the switches are lined up. So I'm going to check. That one's good. So uh, th this game is multiplayer compatible, but I'm playing in single player. So we're good for a ways down there. We'll just ride the engine down. Uh, so I'm playing the part of, you know, engineer, conductor, everything. I do believe we're ready to head out. We're going to turn some lights on. Hop back up here in the cab and we'll get started. I right, put the, uh, oh, what do they call that? The reverser and forward. We're going to turn our bell on because we're going to move. couple blasts on the horn and we'll head on out. The little beep beep there was the end of train device. It says it's moving so it can detect whether the EOT is moving so it lets you know that your whole train is on the move even though what we have right now is fairly short. In the yard we need to keep it under 10 
So I'm actually going to enable slow speed control. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up some info here just so when I hop out of the cab I can see what the train's doing. So like I said, we are we are doing the role of engineer, conductor, and, and everything. So it looks like we're okay down through at least those switches. We may have to stop and line some switches up. So this this game can get uh, or this sim can get really complicated. You can have multiple trains moving and dispatching, and it's got working hump yards where you take a train in and it sorts them out automatically onto different tracks. There's a lot to it. And I don't know if slow speed control is actually a feature on this. I think this is supposed to be like a GP40, but it's a, it's a generic GP40. I know the newer, some of the newer units have slow speed control. I don't know if these actually do. That may just be a game feature that's helping us out. So how are we looking down here on the switches? We got that one. Yeah, we need to get that, some of those switches switched. I th or, no, we want to be on the north main. So I think we're fine. Now normally we would need, you know, permission from the dispatcher to take the main and all that stuff, but we're, we're keeping it simple today, like I said. Because railroading is hard. There's a lot to it. And I, I barely know anything about it. So we want to be out on this track right here. So that switch needs thrown. I can tell that. So, whoa, running through my train. So I'm going to play the part of conductor here and very unsafely run across the tracks. We're going to switch that and then our train should be able to come right on through. And then I'm going to save that spot. So we turn messages back on. So now I can hop in the cab. And I can drive from here. Yeah, we're lined up to go. We need to go. Oh, actually, I forgot. Uh, we need to go across. We need to be on the south. We need to come back on the north. Run! There we go, just in time. And then if we time it just right, I can hop on the train. Now I'm aboard. <laughs> now back on the ground. I need to go set these switches back. So let's pop back over to my save position here. Can get pretty hectic pretty quick. Let's just have it stay about four miles an hour. We could crank up the speed once we get out on the main. Now, since I'm single player, um, I wouldn't have to set all these switches back. It's just good practice. Don't want to leave a main line switch thrown for divergent. 
So the little target here, red, is basically diverging. Green is normal. Nope, I don't want to do that. I want to click on his. Nope, stop. I don't want to click on the engine. There we go. Alright, let's turn off slow speed. Let the train speed up a little bit. Head on down the line. Since we're on the main line, we can we can speed up now. Alright, we're gonna throw that back. And then we're gonna pop back to the cab. I'm trying to remember what the track speed is on here. I think one of these screens will tell me. Yeah, 55 on the main here, so we can crank up the speed. Now when you buy this, um, I wouldn't recommend buying this unless you're super hardcore into trains, because it is $50 for the base game, and then they have a bunch of extra routes and rolling stock and whatnot that you can buy. So it's, it's fairly pricey. But uh, what you get for your 50 bucks is like something like 120, 150 miles of like actual scale railroading. A lot of yards and industries and whatnot. So you do get a lot for your money, but it's a little pricey if you're just kind of casual. So this has the level of simulation that I was hoping Train Sim World. CSX, CSX Heavy Hall was going to have and was severely disappointed in that game. Turned into kind of a joke. We're not going to get super, super fast here. We got a green signal, that's good. Almost catching up with the traffic there. Once we get up here, we're actually going to start heading uphill. Is that a crossing? I didn't see a whistle post. Did I just miss it? I might have missed it. Oh, it's not a signaled crossing. That's why. Oh, it's not a crossing at all. It's light. <laughs> I thought that was a road. Not super familiar with the layout here yet. Um, I think we could have actually crossed over back there. No, that's just a passing sighting. So that industry up there, you can see the distance. We're actually going to pick up and set up on the way back. Or pick up and set out, I should say. So we've got that coming up. Here's an actual crossing. Two longs, a short, and a long. I started a little early, I think. We'll just do it again. Gotta hold on there, little VW. All right, kind of up here. We got one more hump, I think. Then we'll have to start slowing down. So while we're two and along, we've got some gauges here. This is our reservoir. This is our main air reservoir. And I'm not sure what this is. I'm not super familiar with the brakes yet. Uh, this is our brake cylinder. So there's no pressure in the brake cylinder right now, no brakes being applied. And this is the brake pipe, basically the brake line that goes connected between all the different cars. 
This is air flow through the system. There's no air flowing right now. And this is our amps for our traction motors. So those cars were picking up on the way back. So we're going to go down and do some switching and we're going to actually reverse the, the lead unit and come back the other way on the north track there. I don't need to slow down quite that much. Unlike uh, some other train sims, there's no like rules or scenarios or missions or anything like that. It's completely open world sandbox. I could not blow my horn at the crossings and it wouldn't wouldn't matter at all. It's all it's all up to you. So there's a detector back there that detects like uh, hot brakes and stuff like that stuff dragging and it'll radio you if you have any issues. So right up here we're going to want to switch off the main. It's another place we're going to drop off on the way back out. Still getting used to like how much you have to break and win. Apparently there's a crossing up here where, where I need to stop. Yeah, there's a road crossing right there. So we're actually going to kind of ease up on this. I need to switch that switch right there. slow speed for five miles an hour and run ahead of the train get lined into the siding here and we actually want to head on into this siding and we're gonna basically push those cars ahead Save that position there. Speed back up now that I'm actually in control of the train. And we're on the siding working now, so I'm going to turn the headlights down to uh, medium. Oh, it doesn't have a medium. We'll turn them on dim then. Oh crap. It's a lot of momentum and uh, the brakes aren't instantaneous. When you apply the air it takes a while for that to propagate down through the train. Now we're pretty short right now. It's not a huge deal. I'm still learning. How are we looking on the back? We're still out on the main there, basically. Oh, we stopped moving.
Come on, train. So basically, there's a, a few cuts of cars we're going to shove on through because we need to pick them all up. And when we head back the other way we came, that will, this will be the back of the train. So what's the front of the train? Or what's the back of the train will be the front of the train. And I totally misjudged that. Nice. And I rolled backwards a bit, so I don't know if we'll be able to... No, we did get connected, so that's good. All right, now this is this is a tricky bit, and we'll catch out the first time we do it. We want to close this angle cock, and if you just open these both up and let all the air rush in, it can actually trip the emergency, and then you have to reset the brake system. So we want to be careful how we do this. I want to run down to this this end of the cut of cars here, and we're going to close that valve. Let me show you the. So open it. It's actually moving the valve there and then partially open and closed. Pretty cool stuff. Bob, you should be down here doing this. Bob's lazy. All right, so this one. So we want this one open. We want this one partially open. If you watch the cubic feet per minute meter here, it's going to go up as the air rushes into the car lines. And then once it settles back down, you can just open it all the way. Now we want to release the handbrakes on these two cars. And we want to come on forward and get the next cut of cars. I'm going to save this as position two. So let's buzz back down to here and we're still, still coming through. Settle down, train. I didn't want to slam into those other cars, so that's, that's why I did that. Looks like I did that anyway. We're there. Well, I didn't break anything, so that's good. Uh, these are refrigerator cars, so they have their own little engine in there running, keeping them cool. That's what that noise is. All right, so that's closed. So when you go down to this end of the car, do the same thing. I'm going to close it off. Uh, we can go ahead and release the handbrake. And we're going to release the handbrake. Now we can let air into this car. Again, we keep an eye on the airflow there. Once it settles back down, we can open the valve all the way. Now we need to pull forward a little more. So I'm going to save this into position slot 2. We're, we're actually headed uphill. Sometimes it takes a little bit of throttle to get moving. Come on, train. Good 
job. I'm actually just going to set the independent brakes on the Locos. That should hold that. Let me pop back down to here. We're just almost off the, the branch there. Again, we need to run down to this cut of cars and make sure the angle cock is closed. If it's not, we'll just blow all our train air right out into the atmosphere. Just a little more excitement than I want right now. Release the handbrakes. And that one's open, so partially open. Keep an eye on the airflow. Usually when it gets back down around 30 or 40, I open it all the way. All right, let's get off of this uh, switch here. got in front of me. So I'm going to pull down here and not block the road. Then I think I'm going to, I'll get it stopped here and we'll call it quits here for the first video. We've got about half an hour here. That's plenty for a first part. And then part two will continue uh, with the switching. So train brakes are applied. Go ahead and set the independence on the locos. Let everything settle down. We're now off this switch, and we're going to put it back to normal. We're clear here, so I think we're all good. So that's it for part one here of the Run 8 series. Uh, like. Like if you liked, comment if you want to comment. <laughs> I know this is not going to be for everyone. It's kind of a slow paced, uh, but I'm having a lot of fun with this. So that's it for this round. I will see you in the next one.